Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. Today, we're going to be running through some of these uh, Twitter rumors that Wulu has been putting out. Again, it's been a crazy offseason. It's been a crazy last couple of weeks and months um, for the entire professional League of Legends scene. But for especially me here on my channel, we've covered a ton of rumors, stories, all the kind of crazy stuff. Um, we've covered a lot of uh, Wulu stuff, a lot of his Twitter rumors and things. Um, and again, he just kind of had a dump where he, like the offseason was over, a lot of teams have finalized a roster. So he just kind of put out a lot of random stories, rumors, whatever that he heard from the offseason that he never got to use or never came to fruition or whatever so now they're here for us to go through kind of speculate about and talk about while we're in this little bit of a lull during the off season uh, but before we get into that i just want to mention real quick if you're not already subscribed definitely click that subscribe button really quick it's fast it's free it's easy it helps you guys stay up to date on all my latest content and i would appreciate it a ton it helps me out a lot as well and that would be great um, I know it's been kind of a crazy couple of weeks uh, with this weird setup and stuff, but I'm headed back home today. We're traveling back home. Um, so things are going to be getting back to normal. We're going to hit the ground running. There's going to be a ton of content coming out in the future. Um, but with that being said, let's get right into this. Um, this is pretty, probably the last one I'm going to cover of Wulu's uh, tweets like this. He just put out a bunch of stuff, um, mostly talking about the Fnatic mid lane situation in this one. Uh, he says Fnatic mid lane possibilities during the offseason were perks. That's one that obviously we knew about. Fnatic was definitely going to be interested in perks. If Fnatic got perks, they were potentially going to be um, one of the better teams in the world. Obviously, they were one game away from making it to world semifinals last year. Um, and with perks, who would be a significant upgrade in the mid lane, obviously, because Nemesis was one of their weaker positions at Worlds last year with one of the better mid laners in the entire world. Um, Fnatic would have been an absolute threat, so that made a ton of sense, but obviously G2 denied that. G2 was not going to let perks go to Fnatic. That was never even an option. That was never even considered anything, um, but obviously that was going to be a possibility for Fnatic. Um, obviously Niski, that's who they ended up going with. I think Niski is going to fit really, really well into their play style. Uh, he plays that like Walmart doing B, budget doing B style of uh, kind of roaming around, or at least when, when doing B one world, that type of style. I know doing B is really flexible, can play a bunch of different styles, but that type of style where uh, he's not great in lane. He honestly, when he just has to play mages toe to toe with some of the better mid laners in the world, he's often at deficits. He's often getting solo killed. Not that great, but when he can kind of run around the map, when he can fly around, he can make big plays. He can facilitate for his team. And that's going to be great for Fnatic. Obviously, they have carries all around. Whippo can carry games. Upset can carry games. We know that Selfmade can carry games. Um, so I think that's why Fnatic was so interested in Niski, uh, even though he ended the 2020 season on not a very high note. Obviously, Cloud9 kind of went down in flames. A lot of their players didn't end the year very strong, but still, Fnatic is uh, interested in him. They think he's going to be good, and I think a lot of people have faith in him as well. Um, next up was Whippo, who this is the first one who really, really stood out to me. I know we've there's kind of been some rumors of Whippo potentially lanes swapping in the past um, but I think this one is pretty crazy because again this would be a crazy move for Fnatic yes Whippo is very talented um, he has insane mechanics he could definitely be a mid laner but it would take time it, there would be some struggle um, and again Fnatic's a team that's kind of in win now mode Hillisang is on a one-year deal um, Fnatic has the talent to win right now again they were one game away from world semifinals obviously they've lost Reckless and they've lost Nemesis so they're only bringing back three-fifths of that team but Upset is going to be very, very solid. They expect Niski to be an upgrade. So this team could, you know, go to Worlds again and do damage once again. So uh, going with such a, a risk in mid lane. Whippo could be an absolute beast in mid lane, or he could be pretty bad. Um, we don't know. Obviously, it would take time for him to learn a new position. Mid lane isn't too different than top lane, but it is different enough where I would at least be pretty worried and have enough concerns. Um, but man, that would be so, so exciting to watch because obviously Whippo is an insane player. He's so exciting for better and for worse. He has insane pop-off games. He has insane inting games, but he's always fun to watch. He's always fun to flame, whether you like him, whether you like Fnatic, whether you hate him, whether you hate Fnatic. Um, it is quality entertainment, and that in the mid lane would be even more crazy because obviously top lane, um, you know, every once in a while you're playing tanks, you have some boring matchups, stuff like that. Um, but in the mid lane, there's always action all the time. So I could only imagine Whippo being a mid laner. Um, so I thought that was interesting. That Fnatic, you know, at least considered it, at least thought about it, or that Whippo thought about it. Um, and that would have been pretty crazy. Uh, next up, we have Leader, uh, who obviously a lot of people were kind of wanting uh, to be Fnatic's new mid laner. I know there was some big discussion for a while who they should go with between Niski, Leader, and Febivin. Um, obviously, Fnatic didn't end up going with Leader, but uh, a lot of people thought that they should have. A lot of people wanted them to. A lot of people thought that would have been the most exciting signing. And then people thought, okay, well, once Leader's not going to Fnatic, he's going to be somewhere in the LEC, right? But then obviously, we didn't see him get picked up by an LEC team, which is pretty crazy. He's going to be going through the European Regional Leagues again, uh, hopefully proving himself once again and maybe ending up with a spot into the summer split, maybe ending up with a spot in 2022. I don't know, just a really, really crazy, weird situation. And this is another situation of 
uh, a top tier team considering a guy a top tier team saying you know leader is potentially good enough to start on us and then a lot of mid and bot bottom tier teams still passing up on him which is absolutely crazy it doesn't make sense that Fnatic would consider leader to be a po potential option for them and that no other team in the LEC would end up picking him up because if he's good enough for Fnatic he should be good enough for the fifth place team in, in Europe or the seventh place team in Europe or the ninth place term in, team in Europe right like I don't know. Something's a little bit weird to me, but it is interesting that obviously they did consider him. We kind of had heard about that over the offseason as well. Um, another option was Febvin. Obviously, Febvin is very, very familiar with this team. He's played on this organization before. It, I, I'm sure they like him, um, and they were interested in bringing him back. Obviously, he ends up going to Fnatic Rising. He's going to be playing in the European Regional Leagues, and if Niski doesn't work out, if the meta shifts against them, um, if the team starts struggling a little bit, or if Febvin just absolutely smurfs in European Regional Leagues, you know, they have a very, very solid and reliable backup mid laner ready to go in Febvin, uh, who, you know, would be not a bad replacement and would probably fit into this team just fine. Um, so I think Fnatic has two real, real solid options in Niski and Febvin ready to go for the mid lane, which again was their biggest question mark last year at Worlds. Uh, it kind of reminded me of just, we're starting to see some more teams do this. Obviously TSM's doing it with uh, Huni and Hauntzer and Cody Sun and Lost. And I think more teams should do this as well. Yes, you want your academy team uh, to be a, a place to develop young talent. And it can be just because one position is being used as a solid backup doesn't mean you can't develop four other positions or three other positions or two other positions. Um, because while you do want to develop talent for the future, you also want your main team to win right now. And this is a thing we see in all professional sports is solid backups being ready to go. Um, if something happens, if players don't work out, if synergies don't work out or whatever, instead of just ruining your whole season, you can have a solid backup ready to go and still save your season. You can be building towards the future in other positions and still giving yourself a solid plan B to help you win this season. I think that's something that just makes a ton of sense. I think it's really something more teams should be doing rather than just uh, spitballing at five completely young random players, um, especially at a position that you have no chance of playing. Um, you know, I, I think more teams should, should look at stuff like that. And I, I do like what Fnatic's doing because again, Niski is going to be a big question mark. He could come in and be a beast in Fnatic, but he could also come in and not be very good depending on how well he plays, how well he shifts back to Europe, um, what the meta is and how he synergizes with Fnatic. Uh, so it's nice to have Febvin ready to go. Uh, again, interesting that they considered Magic Felix. I don't know how hard they would have considered him. We've heard, um, you know, issues with him behind the scenes, maybe having anxiety issues, maybe uh, not being able to play on stage all the time. Um, it really affecting his play between solo queue, where he's obviously a beast, and the European Regional Leagues, where he's obviously a beast, um, and actually being able to get on stage at the LEC and being able to play at Worlds and stuff like that. Um, but he's obviously very, very talented, and it's weird that he still hasn't been picked up, um, but he said he is interested in playing any of the five positions uh, in the European Regional Leagues, which is crazy. He's a definitely talented enough to do so um, but we don't see stuff like that very often um, and then finally Zico uh, who is the mid laner I believe last year for Movistar Riders um, but he is a young upcoming prospect we heard him that uh, TSM was potentially considering him for the mid lane position I don't think he's quite yet ready he didn't look too great at European Masters um, but obviously people see a lot of potential and talent in him because uh, TSM considered him Fnatic considered him these are some of the you know the better teams in their regions are considering this guy so I do think that's interesting to hear that another team was considering him but I'm not surprised that they didn't decide to go that way um, but maybe uh, you know if Zico has another good split maybe he can find himself in the LEC really really soon because there's a lot of people excited about this guy but I don't know if he's ready for a top tier team yet the next thing that he goes on to talk about is uh, Diplex and Leader uh, denying Fnatic Academy at different stages of the offseason. So that's pretty interesting. Um, again, just like how I'm talking about, I think it's a great move for Febvin since he couldn't get another LEC offer to take the uh, Fnatic Rising position because... If something happens with Niski, Febvin is able to slide into a top tier team where he's going to have a real opportunity to prove himself. Um, and if Leader is looking for a shot in the LEC, why would you not want to be on Fnatic Academy? Why would you not want to be on Fnatic Rising? I'm very, very surprised uh, that Leader would deny Fnatic Academy. I think that's, I question that move by him. Maybe he was just trying to hold out and expecting an LEC offer, but man, Fnatic Rising right now is, especially as a mid laner, is one of the best opportunities you could have if you're trying to break into the LEC because. There, again, there's a chance Niski is just an absolute beast, um, but still, then you'd get to scrim against them, you'd get to learn under that organization, you'd get to be um, just in a really good position to to learn and grow for the future, but if Niski doesn't work out, again, you're able to slide right into one of the best teams in the LEC, and if you pop off, you are set for the near future, um, so I, it's crazy that uh, Fnatic was potentially reaching out to Leader, giving him the mid lane position on Fnatic Rising, obviously they ended up going with Febvin, Really weird to see that leader turn that down. I'm pretty surprised. And again, I would definitely question that decision from him. 
And then he talks about how LCS top laner Ruin would have been playing in the LFL if not for v Visa issues. Obviously, Visa issues all over the world right now with stuff like Corona going on. It's really, really hard to get people in and out of different countries. Um, but if you're a fan of Ruin or wanting updates on him, there you go. But that is pretty much it for this video today, guys. Definitely drop a like if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below given your thoughts and opinions on anything we talked about in this video. Or uh, Now that you've seen some of the different Fnatic mid lane possibilities, are you happy with how their offseason went? Are you happy with Niski and Febben? Um, should Leader have went to Fnatic Academy? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on anything thing that we talked about subscribe to update on the latest content check me out over at twitch twitch.tv slash i underscore am underscore germ uh the merch link is gonna be the first link in the description down below hopefully catch you guys in the next one but until then peace